Hi sweet friends, it's Jarle here. Today I have a spring themed card to share with you. It involves a bit of masking and ink blending, so let's go ahead and check it out. I started by die cutting the largest of the outside in stitched rectangles out of Bristol Smooth cardstock. I chose this cardstock because I will be doing some ink blending and watercoloring with my zig markers. I will also be using the Heavy Doodle Windows Masquerade stencil and the Say What Spring Critters from Lawn Fawn. I started by measuring where the middle was of the short edge of the card panel. So I placed a tick mark there on the top and bottom of the panel. This way I could easily line the stencil up and have it in the right placement. I just taped my stencil on the cardstock with some masking tape. I will be doing some masking later on, so I started by stamping my four images. I used Versafine Onyx Black ink for this, because I will be watercoloring the critters. This ink gives me a really crisp black line and is waterproof, which is perfect. Then I took out a little piece of masking magic and with the residue ink that is left on my stamp, I stamped my image again on the masking paper. I will cut it out later, so the line just has to be noticeable. There's no need to ink up your image again for that mask. So I did this for all four of my critters. First I stamped them on my card panel and then with the remaining ink I stamped them on the masking paper. So I have my four critters here and now it's time to fussy cut these masks out. This is something I don't do quite often, because frankly I'm just really not that good at fussy cutting. I do want to mention something I learned in the past. Uh, it's important that you don't move your scissors the whole time. It's actually better to move your image and keep your scissors straight. Also, you can try to cut in the middle of the stamped line and not so much at the outside of the line as you would normally do when you cut out stamped images. When you cut in the middle of the line, you will not get any strange wide gaps between your image and the background. I hope that makes sense. So here you see I placed that mask over my stamped image. Again, I did this for my four critters, so they are protected while I work on the background. I also mask off the other squares to make sure I don't get any ink where I don't want it. I like to use the, wet, the white heavy doodle tape for this. For the first two panels, I chose Distress Oxides in the colors Abandoned Coral and Kitsch Flamingo. I have the lightest color at the bottom and I'm blending it in with the darker color on the top. For the two other panels, I have Squeezed Lemonade and Carved Pumpkin. Off camera, I also splattered on a little bit of water just to give the blended background more interest. Now, as I remove the masks here, you can see that I made a little error. Uh, I forgot to reposition the tape, so I didn't ink blend the whole square. I was kind of bummed, but uh, I went over the squares again with the same colors, and eventually you don't see it, uh, or you don't see that hard edge anymore on the finished card. Okay, now it's time for the actual reveal. First, I pulled away the stencil and then uh, I removed all the little masks to reveal the white critters underneath. Uh, you don't have to throw the masks away, just stick them on your stamp set and you can always use them again. At this point, I also erased uh, those pencil marks and uh, a little ink smudge that I got. Now time to do the coloring. I used my Zig watercolor markers and the blender. I didn't use any water, I just blended out the colors with the blender brush. 
I will not show you the whole coloring process, but I will write down the colors I used in the description box below. Now, when I use my Zix for coloring, I always go in with the lightest marker first, ju just on uh, the shadows, and I blend that out with my blender brush. Then I go in with the darkest marker, again on those darkest parts of the image, and then I blend that dark, darker color out with my uh, lighter marker, and then I blend that one out with my blender brush. So uh, actually I get uh, three shades, if you know what I mean. Uh, this gives me kind of a gradient, and I always like how the coloring turns out when I use this method. For my sentiment, I chose the scripty hello from Lawn Fawn. Uh, I love this font of the sentiment die. So I die cut this die four times out of black cardstock and then I stack those die cuts up. Uh, I used liquid glue because this gives me a little wiggle room. Maybe a tip I can give you is that I always dab that uh, die cut with the glue on, on a scrap piece of paper first, before adhering it down somewhere. Uh, this prevents glue from sticking everywhere. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I used liquid glue in the past, it was always such a mess. So this method gives you just the right amount of stick without having your glue all over the place on those intricate die cuts. Now I had to choose a beautiful piece of paper to sit behind my card panel. After a lot of debating, I decided to go with the yellow patterned paper. But now that I'm seeing this again, the pink paper would have worked also, I think. So I adhered my card panel on top of that yellow piece of patterned paper using my ATG gun. I did want to add a little speech bubble as well, so I stamped the speech bubble and the funny sentiment that says you are extra awesome with Versafine ink. I used pale orange uh, to give it a little bit of color and then I adhered on both of the sentiments to my panel. So the large hello and then that tiny speech bubble. I placed the hello kind of on an angle, uh, because I really liked the way it looked. To finish it off, I added three bits of jewel drops next to the sentiments. I did uh, three of those, because apparently odd numbers are more visually pleasing to the eye. All that is left to do now is to put my panel on a card base and then it's all finished. I love the simplicity and the masking and the ink blending and I hope you like it as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.